Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. As government forges ahead to completely eradicate fraudulent conduct in all aspects across Guyana, its second anti-corruption framework workshop was held. The importance of what we're doing here today is taking us to another step. Our idea is that this is a fact sheet one, and that when we finish this workshop, depending on what comes out of it and experiences, we may produce fact sheet two. And to create constantly until we're able to build um, a total framework. Flood affected residents of Kaikan and the surrounding communities in Region 7 received the food hampers as part of government's flood relief efforts. Flooding in the affected areas was due to heavy rainfall, which caused the overtopping of the Kayumi River. We are pleased to know this morning that at the Kaikan level in the Kayuni River, the waters uh, receded a little. Uh, but the unfortunate part is that while it's bad for you, is that it obviously has an effect on the other end. And so from the Itrim Bang level, or the Mango Landing um, end, the water has risen about four feet um, overnight um, as of this morning, today, Saturday. And so we are responding to your need to assist you, to support you. And so we want to assure you that you have a government that will ensure that we work with you and we are able to respond to your need. In the health sector, Guyana has just confirmed it's a second case of monkeypox. While this was confirmed, government has already made the necessary provisions to contain the spread of the virus and is also to receive vaccines from the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, next month. We have diagnosed a second person with monkeypox. Um, that person is now um, at the Ocean View Hospital receiving treatment. The person is stable. And we have started doing contact tracing for that person. So Guyana now has its second case of monkeypox. The minister is urging citizens to take the necessary precautions to avoid contracting the virus. People need to take precautions, don't go. If you have somebody with, with rashes, then you should call the health authorities so that we can have somebody go out there and examine what it is and, and be able to guide the person. He maintains that he does not foresee a larger number of monkeypox infection in Guyana. Well, I don't think we'll have large numbers of people being affected. And that's why um, once people, once we are able to identify uh, persons with monkeypox, that's why we have been isolating them to prevent uh, further spread. And, um, and we'll continue to do that. So we don't expect large numbers, but again, the public can help us um, by taking precautions. Um, so if anyone has any rashes and, and, and suspect that it might be monkeypox, then they should come into one of our healthcare institutions so that the doctors there can do a proper evaluation and we can do the laboratory um, tests and to make a determination. Taking a look at agriculture, farmers in Region 6 will now get better access to their farmlands as government has supplied the region with a grader. Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa commissioned the $24 million machine at the Tarnagee East Burbys quarantine on Sunday. The grader will be used to maintain access dams in rice farming areas across the region. A number of farmers were unable to go back to the land to plant their rice. Why? Because the, 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 the land is very bad. So we have to come together and work in, and, and form this partnership. The, what, the users, the RPA, the GRDB and other stakeholders in the IA have to work together. Minister Mustafa distributed approximately $4 million worth in farming supplies and the seedlings to farming groups in Bartica. This is the fulfillment of a commitment made by the minister to assist in the further development of agriculture in Region 7. Our government recognizes the importance of this sector. We recognize that for us to achieve food security, we have to continuously invest in this important sector. Guyana and the United States continue to strengthen their efforts aimed at eliminating hunger and addressing issues surrounding food security in the Caribbean. A team of government officials met with members of the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, where bilateral discussions were held 
in areas aligned with CARICOM's 25 by 2025 food agenda. We have already agreed on what we should tackle and how we should address it in another three years because we have set ourselves an agenda. And if you look at the various categories, we have um, break it down into one, food security. We have prioritized a number of commodities that we want to reduce the food input bill and, and we can supply those commodities uh, to, to you all. In the infrastructure sector, residents of Karao Region 7 will benefit from major infrastructural works which will improve their lives and livelihoods. Public Works Minister Bishop Juan Edgel said that the work to be undertaken is the government responding to requests made by residents. We have awarded a contract of almost $70 million for the upgrade for the upgrade of roads in Karo. And if I'm not mistaken, this is perhaps one of the largest contracts in terms of infrastructural works that would have ever been done in this community. The upgrade of five kilometers of roads forms a part of the government's manifesto commitment to build and maintain 2,000 kilometers of hinterland roads. It also contributes to the government's commitment of providing 50,000 jobs in five years. We have said to contractors all across the country, when you get a job and you go in a local area, employ people from the area. Because infrastructural development must mean better infrastructure, but it must also bring employment to the community. Further on, residents of Bell West, Westerbank de Marara, will soon see the construction of 10 brand new roads. Minister within the Public Works Ministry, Deodat Indar, urged the contractors to ensure the new roads is of good quality and completed within a timely manner. So when I don't do the road, comrades, people must say, look, PPP government do the show, we must be proud of it. Something was meant for good should be good. The minister also urged the members of the community and the NDC to monitor activities within the community to preserve its aesthetics. If people go and do things that are infraction, you tell them and you, you correct the infraction. Not to harass people. You know that's what I'm saying here. I'm saying that go and make sure that they get it done. Residents of Wakenam and Leguan in Region 3 will benefit from major road upgrades on both islands. The work to be undertaken will see the entire road networks across each island being upgraded to rigid concrete pavements and asphaltic concrete. We we'll build them with concrete, cement concrete. If you go some parts of the island, in, in uh, some parts of the coast and so, you'll see that we're converting this black bituminous thing, and we call them asphaltic concrete. We are moving it away and putting it to the normal you know, cemented, what we call rigid pavement. Residents of Region 2 will soon enjoy improved accessibility as government signed $465 million in contracts for road works. The works, which will commence soon, is the fulfillment of yet another commitment by President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali during his outreach to the region back in May. The little things that are irritants to people or that cause hardship to people, that need to be fixed. And it's very important for, and we know this, we recognize this, and we're firmly committed to this, that even while we are busy addressing the big things that will create the jobs and generate the incomes and transform the infrastructure, the little things also need to be fixed. 278 additional students will soon have access to education with the signing of a $54 million contract for the extension of the C.V. Noons Primary School Region 2. The extension will see the construction of a two-story building to house 12 additional classrooms. This too was a promise made by President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali during his outreach to the region back in May. I don't want you only to view it as another 12 classrooms or another building at C.V. Noons. You heard me speak earlier about development in all 10 regions of the country. 
And that development includes ensuring that no matter where you live, no matter which region or which town or which village you live, you must be able to access good quality education. Dr. Singh called on both the teachers and the parents to play a role in nurturing students. We are committed to doing all that we possibly can to create the conditions and to put in place the infrastructure so that all of your children, all of them, without exception, can get a good quality education. But we can't come into your homes and instill that hunger in your children. You have to, you have to pick it up there. Thousands of residents of Region 5 will soon have access to treated water as government moves to construct a new water treatment plant in the region. The U.S. $8.4 million water treatment plant forms a part of government's commitment to improving access to treated water on the coast from 52 to 90% by 2025. We will um, commence the construction for the new water treatment plant here in Region 5 that will be located at Bath and that will improve the treated water coverage from 20% to 78% here in Region 5. 450 persons in Region 5 are now one step closer to becoming homeowners as they can now access their lands in experiment housing scheme to begin construction. Minister Rodriguez disclosed that the infrastructural works, a prerequisite to persons occupying the lands, are about 85% complete. Over $455 million in contracts were awarded to four contractors to develop the housing scheme last year. Shortage of materials and the extensive rainy period had delayed the works. We are taking every advantage now, full advantage of the sunny weather that we're having. And um, I want the people who were allocated in this area to know that 450 lots are available now to be shown. So if there are people within this region that paid for their house lots but have not been shown their lots, they can go to the, the regional housing office and they will be guided as to who will come and identify the lots. Government has expended some $51 million to rehabilitate the main access road at Wauna, Region 1. So Wauna, your days of shake-up, rock-up, bellyache, headache, going through the road is coming to an end because your government is giving you a brand new access road. In education, over 100 participants have graduated from the ICT summer camp held at Dolphin Secondary from August 22 to 26 under the theme, creating a brighter future through ICT. So far, over 1,000 persons across the country have been trained in ICT. And we are going to work very hard to make sure that we create that brighter future, not only through ICT, but through every possible opportunities that exist in our society, that our young people must be able to grasp at and to be able to make themselves, to utilize it, to make themselves prosperous. Nine Guyanese received the scholarships to pursue tertiary education in the People's Republic of China. Public Service Minister Sonia Parag urged the scholars to strike a balance between academia and enjoyment while making the best of the opportunity. I implore you that when you do travel and you get there, that you seek to strike a balance of doing your academics and experiencing a different country because it will make you who you will become. Government is honoring its commitment to building sustainable livelihood projects while supporting vulnerable groups. This was highlighted with the successful completion of their most recent venture, the training workshop on sustainable bamboo development in Guyana. You have a tremendous opportunity to contribute to modern Guyana and to, to create a modern Guyana that is based on the principles of sustainable management of our natural resources and in this particular case, the sustainable management of our forestry resources. As government seeks to integrate migrants in Guyana, Labour Minister Joseph Hamilton 
announced that the Board of Industrial Training, BIT, will provide training for them. We bring the migrants out of the informal arrangement to formal arrangement because the recognition is in informal operation environment you can be they can be exploited they can be taken advantage of and all the issues that come along with it some months ago both the president and the vice president spoke about the fact that in the very near future we might have to um, recruit migrant labor to come work in, the, in different sectors the technical and the vocational training courses will provide the migrants with the necessary skills, enabling them to be employed in various sectors. As Guyana celebrates Amerindian Heritage Month, the government has recommitted to further developing Amerindians through formal training. Minister of Amerindian Affairs Pauline Sukai affirmed that that training will continue for community service officers, CSOs. Leaders will benefit from continued support to be leadership capacity and we remain committed supporting transparency and accountability within villages for the best interests of the villagers. The development of Guyana as a human resource to effectively manage the country's oil and gas sector is moving apace with the opening of an oil and gas training facility. The new 3T Enermec Guyana Training Center of Excellence will provide Guyanese the opportunity to access accredited training in over 450 programs without having to travel overseas. The oil and gas sector has undoubtedly strengthened Guyana's economy and the effective management of the fruit that this sector bears will help secure abundant and life-changing opportunities for all Guyanese. In culture, many local businesses were granted an opportunity at the Maruka Exposition 2022 to market and to develop their products and services. Many were excited for the resuscitation of the Expo after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll said that the Maruka Expo unlocks the tourism potential of the area. So it is my hope that when we come next year, one year from today, that we will have an improvement from what is here that has started that will see the villages playing a greater role in showing and showcasing to the world and the people of the region of what you have to offer. As government continues to demonstrate the One Guyana Mantra, children with special needs began receiving the $100,000 cash grant on Tuesday in East Burby's Quarantine, Region 6. Minister of Human Services and Social Security, Dr. Vindia Prasad, spearheaded the distribution. Minister Prasad assured the Guyanese that government will continue assisting persons with special needs. Our commitment and our support are with their parents and their guardians, their caregivers, because we understand how tough it is at times for them to provide and to have all the things that are really needed by those children with special needs. Minister Prasad affirms that government is making strides to remove the stigma related with disabilities by being inclusive, making sure that no child is left out. I think the fact that we are giving a one-off cash grant and is showing the Ministry of Human Services commitment directly, as well as government's commitment, I think that tells you how serious we are about stigma and about discrimination in particular, because our cash grant is all-inclusive, ensuring that every child child being defined as 18 years and below, is included from the hinterland to the coastland. So that is removing discrimination with stigma. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Hugh Todd, conducted a two-day outreach in Region 10, listening to the concerns of residents and providing on-the-spot solutions for some of the issues. The minister met with the residents of Aichuni and handed over a sewing machine to a local seamstress who will be teaching garment construction to others in the community. The minister also visited other communities, including Dalawala, Silver City, and West Watuka. He reiterated government's intention to better serve every community. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms. Goodbye.